Up to now, we've described the goods market and the money market in separation and how they work. And we can now merge the two to get the famous ISLM model, which is the central macroeconomic model describing the behavior of the economy in the very short run. Again, the example of a useful textbook in this context is the one by Blanchard Olivier, Macroeconomics 8th edition, published by Pearson in 2021. The starting point for the discussion here is that we have the IS curve in the left picture that represents the equilibria in the goods market. And we have the LM curve in the right picture representing equilibria in the financial market. And now, uh, how can they jointly actually determine the uh, equilibrium of the economy in the very short run? And I refer to very short run as the situation when prices do not change. So prices cannot uh, change. And this can only happen in the very short run when firms cannot react to economic changing economic circumstances by changing their price level. Now we can merge the two diagrams that we had on the previous slide. These two, we just shift them so that they are above each other and get the famous ISLM diagram, where we have again the interest rate on the vertical axis, income output at the horizontal axis. We have the downward sloping IS curve, the horizontal LM curve, and now at the intersection of these two curves, that's where the goods market is in equilibrium and where the money market uh, is in equilibrium. So both markets are in equilibrium. That's then the short run, very short run equilibrium of the macroeconomy where the interest rate is I bar and the income output level is Y star. So here is just a verbal description again. So where both curves intersect, that's where both sub-markets are in equilibrium, the goods market and the financial market or money market. The interest rate is at the level that the central bank sets, I bar, and the output level is uh, at the equilibrium where the two curves intersect, um, that is Y star. Now, I refer to this as the very short run, which is a slight departure of the standard textbooks, which refer to this as the short run. But actually, I want to make um, a certain distinction between uh, the time horizon over which prices are fixed, and prices are fixed in the very short run, where firms cannot adjust them, and where prices adjust, but not fully to the new equilibrium, which I refer to as the uh, short run. And then when prices and price uh, expectations both have time to adjust, that would be the medium run. And the long run would be where money is completely neutral and uh, we can abstract from prices altogether. So next we will have a look at what happens if we have uh, fiscal policy changes and monetary policy changes and what happens to the equilibrium in the macroeconomy in the very short run. The first scenario that we consider is expansionary fiscal policy. And recall that this is either an increase in governmental consumption expenditures or a decrease in taxes. The IS curve is given by the standard formulation that we had. It consists of consumption of households, investment of firms, and governmental expenditures. And the LM curve is where the interest rate is equal to the interest rate that the central bank sets. Now the government raises G or decreases T, and we see immediately that this has an effect on the IS curve. If it's an expansionary policy, the IS curve would shift to the right, and we will get a new equilibrium in the very short run, where the money market and the goods market is in equilibrium, at a higher output or income level Y2, with still the old interest rate I bar. Now we can also do the opposite change actually, which would be a contractionary fiscal policy where the government decreases consumption expenditures or increases taxes. Again, this would affect the IS curve, but this time the IS curve would shift inwards. Now here we have that um, it shifts to the left. The interest rate is still at I bar, but the intersection between the LM curve and the uh, IS curve now is at the lower level of output and income, Y2, and we have a contraction of the economy. 
Remember that in both of these cases, expansionary fiscal policy or contractionary fiscal policy, we have the multiplier effect operating at the level of the uh, goods market in the background. So the new equilibrium is where already all these multiplier effects played out and the uh, new goods market equilibrium is already reached. So up to now, we've analyzed two of the crucial policy experiments that we can analyze with the ISLM model, expansionary fiscal policy and contractionary fiscal policy. However, there are two more policy experiments, uh, namely expansionary monetary policy and contractionary monetary policy. In case of expansionary monetary policy, the central bank decreases the interest rate in the hope that this boosts investment of firms because uh, uh, loans become cheaper for firms, uh, so they can um, refinance at a cheaper rate, which would induce higher investments and therefore lead to higher output and income. Now, what happens if the central bank decreases the interest rate is that the IS curve does not change, but the LM curve shifts downwards. And we have now a new equilibrium at the intersection of the old IS curve with the new LM curve at the higher level of income and output, but the lower level of the interest rate. So the central bank was able to boost incomes and output in the very short run. But what happens now if there is a contractionary monetary policy? Now, in this case, the central bank, for example, wants to in fight inflation. <clears throat> and in order to do this, it would usually increase the interest rate to prevent the economy from overheating. Increasing the interest rate is hoped to reduce investment and thereby reduce income and output. Again, this contractionary monetary policy affects the LM curve. And this time it shifts upwards because the interest rate increases. Again, there is a new equilibrium at the intersection of the old IS curve with the new LM curve at the lower level now of income and the higher level of the interest rate. Up to now, we've seen that the government can fight the recession by enacting expansionary fiscal policies, which is to decrease uh, the taxes or to increase government spending. And this shifts the IS curve. The uh, central bank can also enact expansionary policies to fight the recession. In this case, it's to decrease the interest rate um, and thereby shift the LM curve downwards. Now we might wonder whether these two um, entities can coordinate and jointly fight the recession, which is actually what happened uh, in case of the Great Recession or at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we will analyze how such a policy coordination will play out in terms of the ISLM diagram. To do this, we start with the standard ISLM model where we have the interest rate on the vertical axis income output on the horizontal axis, and we have the short run equilibrium here at the intersection of the two curves with um, the interest rate being I1 bar and output being Y1. Now, the government enacts expansionary fiscal policy, which shifts the IS curve outwards. And at the same time, the central bank enacts expansionary monetary policies which shifts the LM curve downwards. And we see that from the old equilibrium that we had on the previous slide, we move to the new equilibrium here with much higher output Y2 and a lower interest rate I2 bar at equilibrium. So the policy coordination can be done. And as we will see uh, on the next slide, it will have stronger effects than if we keep one of the two policies constant actually. So the first case is that if there is only fiscal policy and no monetary policy. In this case, we would not move to this equilibrium here with a lower interest rate and a much higher output level, but we would move to this equilibrium here with the old interest rate I1 bar and an output level that is higher than Y1, but much lower than Y2. So we would be in this equilibrium here. If, by contrast, we only enact monetary policies and don't have any fiscal policy, then we would end up in this equilibrium here with a lower interest rate and a higher output level than Y1, but again, much less of an output level than uh, in case of a combination of both policies, expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy. 
To summarize, the ISLM model uh, combines the goods market equilibrium and the financial market equilibrium and allows for analyzing economic uh, policies and their effects in the very short run when prices do, are not yet allowed to change because firms do not have the time to react um, so quickly. In the following, I use uh, short run to refer to the situation when prices change, but they um, uh, do not change fully with price expectations. And I use medium run when prices change and price expectations change to the new equilibrium. And I use the long run basically when mon money is completely neutral. We've seen that in the ISLM model, both expansionary monetary policies and expansionary fiscal policies can increase output. Uh, but coordinated policies um, can be even more effective in increasing output if a recession takes place.